of our featured interviewee tonight. So without too much further ado, let's give a healthy Earth Day welcome to the forgotten astronaut who is responsible for this type of content that I'm about to show you. Thanks for being here, everyone. All right, everyone here at Civic TV, we've aligned our satellites. Oh. To pick up the transmission from the forgotten astronaut. And without further ado, here he is joining me in the studio. Pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Civic TV. Um, great to have you here. Well, welcome, people. Thank you, Adam, for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it, it's an honor to have you on. I really appreciate you. I love the content you put out. And we just watched a clip of your show, but um, there's a lot to take in there. Um, how do you describe your stream to people? Life, life, sci-fi live cinema show. It's like uh, I would like to see or must be see it as a as a movie, but it's did it. It's done in lifetime, in real time, and it's done without using computers, without using renders. It's just using different lights, cameras, optics. It's like the old Sifi, the old retro movies. And so, all done live, all analog effects, right? That's so cool. Yeah, it's a mixture of uh, video feedback, liquid light show all retro slide projections toys models it's it's like a like a dream of a boy when you are a little child and you want to you want to become astronaut you play with toys like dreaming about your your planet your far far away galaxies and i'll keep i'll take all of these things and i mix it all together to try to explain a story about the space I love that. You bring the same passion as a kid playing with his toys, I have to say. And um, yeah, and so we saw a good example of the liquid light show that you mentioned in that first clip. But what exactly is liquid light? How do you describe that? Yeah, the liquid light, it's a old projection technique created by the, in San Francisco, I think, uh, in the 60s during the hippie era. And it's it's uh, it's using a light that came from a overhead projector. That it's a projector that that has the light on the bottom and has different optics that concern the the light in a certain point. 
then with a clock glass, you can mix some different liquids that they don't mix it themselves, like, for example, alcohol with oil or oil with water and 1,000 different, different liquids that everybody is fucking crazy and looking at it in different strange places. No, every, every, every artist has his own liquids, but the basics will be um, water, alcohol, and, and oil, mineral oil. And every combination gives a different effect, right? Exactly, exactly. It's like I, I've been learning these last three, four years, but there's people that has been doing this for 40 years and every day they learn something because it's quite different if you use the product at the beginning when you buy it or when you have it for after three years. Maybe the reaction is different. Maybe the product has changed for the light, for the humidity, for these kind of things. And when you mm, you put like a little, little piece, happen something special that uh, it's unique, it's unique. And it's something that you cannot repeat every time the same. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll train myself to do the shows that I, that I done, but um, every show is different. And if I try to repeat, it, it, it could be possible because the liquid always has his own reaction and his own way. That's so cool. And um, we get to see it happen live. No, no, no uh, pre-prepared clips, just all live on stream. And I saw in chat, Emster Live says, I got a projector with glass plates with colored oil in it. So very cool. Um, yeah, it, it's very, it's very old, but uh, it was so, so powerful during the 60s and 70s. But when the, the digital projection arrived, uh, it moved it. And this kind of shows was very difficult to, to, to find. To, to be honest, uh, the first time I saw a liquid light show wasn't a Krung Bin uh, show. Krung that, Bin, love them. Yeah, Krung Bin, it's, it's cosmic too. It's, it's, it it's, it's, it's like uh, Thai funk. They, they classify their music like a Thai funk, but for me it's cosmic Thai funk. No? And I saw this, uh, these projections of Drippy Eye that are one of the masters of the Liquid Light Show. And I asked to, to some colleagues, what kind of software they are using to do this? And they say, man, no, no, this is, this is not digital. This is not a software, this is uh, real. And it was like, it's impossible. I, I've never seen something like this before. And when I started to, to looking for in videos to search in, in YouTube, I, I found some videos how to make the basics. And I decided to to start. YouTube has helped so many people launch their passion projects like that. And exactly. you mentioned you talked to your colleagues about the light show that you saw. Do you mind uh, just telling the people like what you do for a living? Uh, I have a company that um, that run digital digital events. It's an audiovisual company that we create. Uh, interactive technology, interactive projections using Touch Designer, using Watch Out, using that kind of softwares. But uh, I, I run the company. I, I don't do the visuals. I don't touch it, the, the softwares. I make the, the creativity of the projects and I lead the, the projects too. But uh, I, I, I'm not involved in, in, the, in the basic, basic part of the project. And with the Forgotten Astronaut, I can do all the process that it's the, what I love most because I decide how the story must be. I decide how to present these, these scenes of the story. And I did it myself, everything with my hands. And that's important for me because it relaxes me a lot. Uh, every time I depend of a computer, of a render, of a amazing LED screen of 20,000 pixels that we need to create a video and it's complicated and everything it's um, uh, with a short timing and with a short deadlines and a lot of stress. And the Forgotten Astronaut is like space. There's no gravity. There's no time. It's just you and the liquids and the feedback and the toys and, and start the story. Just that. 
That's so cool. And I was going to say, it must be really freeing to do this type of thing when you're in that digital realm all the time. So really cool to like, just like, instead of like so many people use touch designer on Twitch and for their streams, but you, uh, you work with it all the time. So that wouldn't be relaxing, would it? It's like swimming against the river, but, uh, Honestly, I, I didn't do it for the people. I do it for, for myself. If there's some people that it like it, I'm very happy with it. But uh, it was more like people go to yoga or meditation or things like that. I have the uh, the spaceship. So cool. And um, you obviously have a real passion for it. I want to show another example to everyone about uh, the liquid light shows that you put on on your stream. So let's check that out together. incredible looks on that on that clip in particular that we were watching how did you pull that off what came together to make that happen here is a mixture of uh, water uh, with uh, some color ink and um, you have a little bit of oil milan oil and the special product it's a uh, ferrofluid that it's a magnetic liquid that you can move it with using a magnet that you are not seeing it at this time, but it's uh, behind the, the, the LED tablet that gives us the, the light. It, it's a product that it's not very simple to work with because uh, it you need the, the, the it, it's formed by little pieces of metal with the oil. And uh, when you mix it with the alcohol, with the, with the water, you are losing some part of this oil and uh, you have you need to to work fast with the, this the magnetic liquid because at three four minutes you you lose it you run the risk of diluting it too much or yeah absolutely and the chaos engine guessed it no he knew about the ferro fluid <laughs> um so it is it, it, a very special product it's it's not cheap but if you if if you want to investigate or if you are curious, just uh, five, 15 or $20 and you, you will have a very, very fun night. So cool. And um, so, yeah, you mentioned, you know, having magnets applied to it. You've already talked about the projector, but do you mind sharing a little bit of that behind the scenes with us, like the equipment that you use to get this done? Yeah, let's gonna, let's gonna show the people how, how it works. Awesome. I'm gonna change. And we start or travel through the cosmos. Here, let's gonna change my camera. 
Okay, here. All right. We have the main screen and these three overhead projectors. Look at that. Okay. Who would have thought overhead projectors would make art this beautiful? <laughs> In my headphones. Okay, here we have one overhead projector with that we have a circle, and here we have another one with a smaller circle. You can combine it using different colors, using different techniques in every dish. This is a Club dish. Nice. Oh, this is the things that we use that we put here. And let me. We put it here and over here. We put it the water. And you can see there. Maybe if I move. Are you all taking notes? He's giving us the secrets. Now you can see the water. When we have the water, we can add some oil and we will have some bubbles because the water and the, the oil doesn't mix together. And then we have the bubbles. We have what looks there. like the moon. Yeah. The, the funny thing of this is that using very simple and very elemental elements, you can create amazing things. That's so cool. Real. It's very important the, in the sci-fi to have money, to have uh, realistic effects or backgrounds. But the main important, the most important is the story. And if you have some story to, talk, to tell, you can do it. Hey, that's a perfect segue, by the way. Um... After this, I want to show the people a little bit of Sopa Cosmica. We've already been looking at little clips of it, but what is Sopa Cosmica? Cosmica is a personal Star Wars. To explain it simple, it's like a galactic soup. It's a story of love, the forgotten astronaut that has the mission to find an answer for the COVID and the war problems, okay? And he will fly away on the galaxies to find these answers. And we will follow him. We are watching his story. Important now, mission. Now, another kind of projection here. Here so we have cool. dishes and we can splash these dishes creating these things. Amazing. That came together so quickly too. But it wouldn't have been quick to set this up. You can, you've set up like the perfect environment for yourself to just like express this creativity in an amazing way. It's really cool. Start with just one overhead and with one overhead, it was fun. You can see it here, but 
you can just make one planet, no satellites, no moons, no other things. And I decide to, oh, I need another one. <laughs> when we had two, why not to, to have three? And these are the three that you see on the front. This one, that one, and the third one. And with this, we create the liquid light projections. But we have another kind of pr projections. Is or are better. The I think we may have lost your mic for a second there. Yes, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. We lost. And so I'd ah. like to play a clip that really shows off exactly what you're talking about. So the technique is one thing, but uh, to marry it with the storyline, that really brings it to life on stream. And so I'd really like to share this piece of the first episode of Sopa Cosmica with everyone. Perfect. Awesome. Let's check it out. A planner from another system. It's an amazing moment.
It's incredible stuff. Um, it really, like, it's hard to describe the emotional impact that some of those images have. And especially when you pair it with the story, like, you, you become really emotionally invested in it. It's very cool. Could you hear me there? <laughs> I'm changing my, my headphones because right now in here it's better with that headphones. Perfect. The story is about uh, love and lust are, are the all the good stories, no? That are the only two things that uh, the human has, love and lust. All all of us uh, will lost a, a lot of things, friends, family, things, emotions. But we will lost ourselves because we will all of us we will die someday. And the only thing that we can do in this world is to to love, love uh, what love people, love family, or love what you do. But uh, it's about this. The forgotten astronaut and the super cosmica talks about about this and. You, you will see it, uh, we just have two episodes, but um, you will see that uh, it's about emotions, it's about uh, love, just that. And it pairs really well with the music that you've chosen for it. Where, when did that come in? The music, uh, I, I start The Forgotten Astronaut using another kind of music. Let me show you. Let's see if the camera right now works well. Looks it's good. Working well. Okay. Yeah. Here we have the, the, the box of uh, the records. Hey, Forbidden uh, Planet. <laughs> a lot of different 5 p.m. cosmic music. But right now, with the copyrights, things are getting more difficult, no? Right, absolutely. Got to watch out for those DMCA violations. Yes. I decided to work different because it was a problem. If I start to create these episodes, this um, galactic soup with music that maybe it was cut or the stream was cut and I talk with uh, epidemic sound, mu uh, epidemic sound that um, they have like I don't know ten thousand songs or something like that, and I start to make a research the music that I could work for me, and uh, I I start to to use their music, and I'm very very happy with them. Obviously, it's not the same as using Brian Eno's music or or Vangelis music because uh, I would love it. And when I play it for myself on on private events or things like that, I use uh, the different musics that I use in on the streams. But uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. I've actually used Epidemic Sound with past jobs before when I worked at companies that had a license for it. Um, yeah, very cool service. You can find a lot on there. And um, it, it brought to mind seeing your records, the uh, story of the soundtrack for 2001, A Space Odyssey, that they were, you know, developing a whole score for the movie. But then Stanley Kubrick dropped the vast majority of the score to just play out, you know, the classical themes that we associate with 2001. It, it's difficult because uh, I start uh, writing a story using a notebook. Okay, when I don't know how to how to manage the story, how or where I w would like to go, I have some dices here to help me explain the story. So cool! And what about the dice? What do those say to you? That. There are some that express some actions. There are other that express some characters. Okay. And uh, it helps to me to, because if not, your, your mind always brings you to things that you have lived before. Movies that you have seen before, books that you have read before. And with this, it's, it's full creativity because the dice doesn't understand you about your past. 
and and it gives you different options that at the beginning it like oh this how i could manage this but uh, later if you find the solution sometimes i need to roll the dice again because it's impossible how i manage this i can do it and i roll the dice again but uh, it helps me a lot so I cool create it with uh, like the story and when i have the story i start to listen music to help me in this part of the story i it's a mix of music that i take from epidemic sound the different effects that we can find here for example Oh, we heard you there and then lost you for a second. Yes. There you are. Got you back. Can you hear me? Yep, got you back. And yeah, to you filters and using effects. Okay. Or different voices. Yes. <laughs> if you are a bad guy, you need to use voice like this. Or you are an artificial intelligent human voice. You need to maybe talk like this. And I create all the all the dialogues and with using these dialogues um i record all the voices and i make the final mixtape usually i make the mistake using like a dj i have the i'm not doing it like uh with post-production right i make the the music using uh i don't know if you can see it let me show you here I have oh, cool. this, uh, a mixer, this Pioneer digital mixer, and uh, these two decks. And here are a cow's pad for sounds. Okay, and another cast pod there to change the voices and things like that. The gear and, is real. Very neat. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always... It's always uh, do it in real time. The the audios are not in real time, but it's one shot recording. I'm not um, editing music or editing the voices. I'm I'm shooting all the voices uh, in real real life. I can do it in the shows because I cannot do it the audio and the video at the same time. But um, usually the I did it the all the mixtape, all the audio, like one week before. But so then doing it this way, it still allows for some amount of improvisation during the stream, right? Yeah, if if you if you see my streams, if you watch my streams, you can find one thousand mistakes by <laughs> by by show. But uh, it's life. I can do it. I cannot do it better. I always try to give my best. But sometimes I, I will need to have more arms or more hands. For for that reason, sometimes my, my couple Anna helped me in on the show. But right now he's pregnant of, of eight months. We will be far, uh, we will Woo! be far the yeah. next the next Congratulations and coming up. Thank you. A little alien is coming. <laughs> That's right. The next interstellar experience for you. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, very cool. And I was curious what it all looked like um, before it goes live, like how finished the story is. And I'm, I'm really glad to see the behind the scenes there. So you don't have like a script. You have the ideas you record ahead of time. You play back live during the stream. Um, how, so you, you describe the dice and how you write, but... I guess reeling back, why space? Why why did you start this story in the first place? I always want. Uh, I always falling in love with the space since I was a child. Uh, I'm not a religious person. I'm not. I'm not. Some. I'm, I, I'm not said something bad about religion, but I don't believe in in a human god or a god that creates us. For for me, it, there's much more outside that we need to discover before. Maybe it is. Maybe there's a a super god, a super powerful god that create everything. But uh, why we don't go there and let's see if this exists or not? And for me, the space 
has been the the weapon of the knowledge all the all the human um all the human race has been walking with the uh, astronomers with the uh, science with the uh, human brain and why not uh talking about the space in a different way in a more um more psychedelic way okay. yes friendly yeah. and you don't, so you don't need to, to know which is the total mass of jupiter to talk about the space you can feel the space in a different ways and if you watch the re old retro sci-fi movies of the 50s and the 60s you has that feeling using very very rude technology and very rude elements but the stories are very good and the feelings that they propose are very very good too and it still sparks the imagination right like what you're talking about looking up at the stars used to be what fueled our imagination and now we look at the movie screen and watch sci-fi movies yeah you need a lot of things in in alien in alien the first movie the alien just appeared three times in all the movie yep absolutely you are all the time like and I, I try to do to to make some 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 things similar. No, uh, you don't need uh, an actor to create a a love scene. You don't need uh, very very uh, expensive special effects to create that a spaceship is landing out from a planet, and things like that. Yeah, and so you have a full cast of characters in your story, and I wanted to just show off a clip that, you know teases the people with a couple of your characters on screen um everyone uh you've probably already seen it in the chat but you can put in exclamation fa and follow the forgotten astronaut wherever he is online and you can go find uh these episodes of sopa cosmica but i'm just going to give you a little taste of the story here and uh thanks for being here Say something. I think that there's some buildings there. What do you say at the below? This is not Hollywood. There are buildings and I'm proceeding things of intelligent life. Hello. Welcome to Sora, stranger. What are you looking for? I just came in peace. I just need some repairs on my ship. I have damaged the reactor. And we have to review the intercom. Okay. If you came in peace, you are welcome. I'm telling you, everyone, you got to go check it out. Go watch the episodes, get caught up. There's going to be more. But Dean George, thanks for following the Forgotten Astronaut. Dean George says he's follower number 400. That's awesome. <laughs> you. And um, so, yeah, we've talked a lot about um, the story and the liquid light show aspect. There's another big ingredient that goes into your shows. Yeah, that's gonna talk about the video feedback. It's a technique that came from the 70s. It consists to has a TV and a camera 
and this camera points to the TV and we create like a loop, okay, that I'm gonna show you. Let me change the camera. Is that one? Okay. Look at that. I'm gonna move. And uh, when I was growing up in the 80s, I would take our uh, camcorder at home, connect it to the TV, and point it back at it and just like geek out on it. I love it. <laughs> see, okay. Here you can see the camera that it's pointing to that TV. And now I can make zoom or zoom out. But what happened when I create a negative effect? Very cool. Yeah. That, that here, that we have the tunnel. But what or, do, or where we go if we go looking through this tunnel? We start to create this multidimensional space. Amazing. Amazing. And we can combine it with a lot of different effects or techniques. So cool. L look at that. Here, let me put the camera normal. Okay. Here we have all the video feedback station. I have this uh, camera that is pointing to this TV. I have another camera beside to create different effects. And here in the other side, I have a visual presenter that it's a camera. Oh, nice. To this piece, and we can create these holographic effects. You have the coolest gear. I love this prismatic holographic effects right in front of your very eyes. We can zoom and add shape. And so the motion shapes the feedback. Exactly. There's 1,000 or 1,000 million chances to work this and create these multidimensional spaces. So neat. And it gets used extremely effectively on your channel, on your streams. I have a great example I'd love to share with everyone. Um, so let's check it out together.
asteroid field. And what are we gonna do? Amazing use of video feedback there. Awesome textures, awesome colors. So cool. <laughs> I've probably said that a lot, but so cool. Awesome. <laughs> feedback is a good technique too that allow us to create uh, a lot of different spaces and help us to mix all the different techniques that we use uh, for fluently, very fluently. But it wouldn't be a story without your characters, right? Thank yeah, exactly. You know the main character. This is Lop, the forgotten astronaut. The main uh, character of our story is uh, is it's me. It's the kid that I want to be. The the, the astronaut that I always wanted to be. So but, cool. Uh, I can be in the real life, but I can be here on Twitch, and I can live my own adventure my only uh, my own cosmic adventures and you know guys this is love the forgotten astronaut beaming to us from outer space honored yeah. to have you uh first interstellar guest here on the show hey and thanks for being here mr spock we have mr spock in the chat mr spock sound guy first time chatter thanks for being here Hello, Spock. Mate. And so, um, yes. So you have models, figures, um, complete storylines with video feedback, liquid light shows. What comes next for Sopa Cosmica? I said that in Sopa Cosmica we have more things. We have, for example, let me show you. Another another good point of Super Cosmica. Let me change my mic. Falling into video <laughs> feedback. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Coming through clear. We have to get... that now you can see it. The games are very important on the channel too, because we use it to interact with the people. We have these two games. The first one here is the game of the space shuttle, that we need to move the space shuttle using these different bots to bring it to the main point of the center. And this space shuttle help us in some points. And we have here the asteroid game, which is the favorite of Phobo Sapiens. You must tell him. That yes. In and Phobo <laughs> is in the chat. Um, he says purple down. And that's, that's exactly how this becomes interactive, right? You uh, listen to the chat and move the pieces based on what they say, right? Exactly. It was very hard at the beginning. I thought that we cannot do it anymore but the people is getting engaged and uh we, we I, I i like it i really like it because you are very calm but but in certain point you need to use your brain to help me in the story to help love in the story to to continue the story and it's very fun here you can see different models that we we use here different spaceships different games that you win the other day i, I owe you yes um, actually right I, I okay here you have different toys different things and that's something that will sh will show you on the next episode but this is the mineral that the people are looking for in the galaxy and we will have some 
microscope images of some Ooh. minerals help us to explain the story too. Fantastic little sneak preview there. And that's right, so I was on the stream the other day and I won. I won one of the games, yes. <laughs> And so it does become, you are passively watching, but then that brings you right into the narrative. Yeah, when you have, you're like sort of forced to interact with the games and it, it's a very cool aspect to it all. That's, I won't show it right now. I cannot uh, show it anymore, but uh, more, more games are coming and more fun games are coming. Awesome. I wouldn't expect you to give away too many of your secrets. You're already being uh, super gracious in showing us around the back end and showing us behind the scenes. Very cool. I, I sometimes I use uh, this uh, on, on my streams, not on Sopa Cosmica. On Sopa Cosmica, you cannot see or you not see what I'm doing uh, uh, because we need to focus on the story. But... Uh, well, on the other streamings, on the Cosmic Chill, what I call the normal show that I do, that I put some music and I start to play with no story, with just music and visuals. Sometimes I explain uh, what I'm doing at that moment, showing uh, with the cameras and showing that behind the scenes, but not with more details as I did here. And I actually have a clip uh, from Cosmic Chill that we can play. And so... Uh... Everyone, that is his regular show when uh, Sopa Cosmica is not on. There's been two episodes of Sopa Cosmica. Third episode's coming up, and you can also check out Cosmic Chill with stuff like this. of mother <laughs> yes and so um that was cosmic chill so when can people check out cosmic chill on your channel usually during the week during the week you can find my my program cosmic chill usually it's two or, or three hours sometimes we have been arrived to six hours oh wow it's yeah. not that Usually we go with two, three hours stream. And so thank you, Crack Mother, for putting that in the chat. You can follow uh, the Forgotten Astronaut at any of those places and follow him on Twitch so that you get those notifications when Cosmic Chill goes live. But um, yeah, so I'm eagerly awaiting the next episode of Sopa Cosmica. 
Um, you've played the other episodes once during Synth Fest and once during uh, Spring Zing Fest, it was, right? Is that right? Yeah, no. The first one was an Awe Fest, Fest, and your first, an Awe. And the second one, I tried to do it in Synth Fest, but my computer fails, and I decide to do it again, complete, on, on the Think Fest. Okay, right. Think fast. And so when when will we get episode number three? I think or I would like that could be before my child borns, but I I don't know if I could do it, but I will try it. Episode three before my child born. I think the birth of your child might take precedence over episode three, right? But I hope we can get episode three uh, sooner rather than later. But whenever it is, I'm going to be there for it. Yeah. Let me change. Here, I have some people that want to tell you something. Maybe they have more information than me. Oh. Oh, what's up, guys? <laughs> These are the people that... Who are that people? We are bot people here. These are the characters of the Super Cosmica Episode 2. Honored yeah. to have the full cast here in the studio with me. Since that, I can say that some of them will appear on Episode 3 again. That we know. Hide you back there. And um, so, very cool. I'm excited about it. I, th I hope everyone else is excited about it, too, at this point. Um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to everything else you're going to be putting out there. And really, really, truly honored and happy that you came on the show to talk to us about it. Very cool. It's my pleasure. And, um, you know, we've been watching some amazing interstellar sci-fi movies in honor of this interview tonight and i asked you to pick out some movies and you told me that this next movie is uh your favorite right yeah yeah contact is my my favorite sci-fi movie because uh it it has more than than sci-fi it has this uh love and lust that it's necessary to for me to to understand how is the human being and uh, Jodie Foster uh, has this amazing interpretation, and uh, the movie for me is is totally complete. It it's very good at science. The idea that uh, some alien species can connect with us, I'm pretty sure that they first will send us a radio signal than uh, WhatsApp. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> then WhatsApp, Maybe. yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it it will be radio before WhatsApp, and that we need to we need to listen, we need to look at the at the cosmos, we need to look at the at the night skies, and we need to try to understand what we are and where we came from. And Cosmos is a movie that talks about this and much more, and yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. I'm looking forward to watching it together. And thanks for staying up for this. Before I let you go. I'd like to show you, um, I know you're on a bit of a delay looking at the stream over there, but um, this is my token of appreciation for you coming on the show. It should be popping up on your screen there on stream soon. Okay, be before before finish, I would like to, to explain that uh, co um, Contact is the, the, it, it's, it, it, the it, it's a book written by Carl Sagan. That's right. Carl Sagan person that maybe uh, uh, affects me more or influence me more on my way of think. Uh, cosmos, the first Cosmos, changed my mind completely, opened, me, opened my mind, and uh, it's an honor to, to see this movie, this amazing movie of Carl Sagan uh, with all of you. And I very appreciate for your token. I am very appreciate for you inviting me to your, to your stream. Um, I'm glad to to share my my crazy adventure with all of you. So and cool! I really appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. 
really great to talk to you today. And um, everyone, you know, we all need some more Carl Sagan in our lives. So go watch Cosmos too after this. <laughs> Bye. Thank it's you, really Anna. great talking to you. Thanks so much for being here. And um, let's go into the movie. Yes. Live long and prosper, everyone. How long has gone before? <laughs> Take care, Paul. It's been a pleasure.